1903, the year that the Wright brothers became the first to achieve powered flight, was also the year that Kane Tanaka was born, a Japanese lady who is currently the oldest living human on earth, racking up an incredible 116 years of life. For many this number is unimaginable, with the average life expectancy being around 73, with only a small number ever passing 100. In the last few centuries, the average life expectancy has grown at an incredible rate. Technology and medicine are continually being utilised to accomplish these feats, with some experts expecting this century to be able to stop ageing and extend life forever. This amazing feat has only one roadblock in the way. Human bodies aren't built to live forever. The max age for humans today is set around 120 years. So is this possible? And if so, would we even want to live forever? I remember the day I found out that my pop had lung cancer. He had been a smoker for many years, but I never really felt deep down what it would be like to lose him in that way. As months went on and his health declined and his hospital visits increased, I began to see the spirits of those who loved him most begin to bend and break with the realisation that we were going to lose him. The week leading up to his death, his body was on its last legs. He was becoming more weak and frail and his lungs were starting to give up on him. I will never forget when my mum recounted the story of seeing him one day in which he began to scream out for someone to help him to breathe, gasping desperately for air. Not long after that experience he passed away. His death brought relief to his pain and suffering body, but no relief to the pain of losing a loved one. This story though is not unique, with thousands of people dying every year from age-related diseases such as cancer, and many more experiencing discomfort and pain because of our imperfect and aging bodies. That day I asked the question, why does this happen to us, and why do we age? Well, what we do know about aging is that it happens to all. The intrinsic processes and surrounding environment like sunlight, toxins and diet all have an impact on the structures and functions of our cells, resulting in a steady decline in the overall health of our body. Take for example your car, which over the years begins to grow old. The bolts rust, the rubber breaks, and the parts begin to not work, resulting in the end of a car. Humans have similar issues. However, unlike cars, we have a fairly limited capacity to regenerate and replace degrading parts. Research is finding cell replication to be the primary cause of aging. The story begins like this. As we live our day-to-day -day life, our cells accumulate genetic damage. These occur naturally during DNA replication and mitochondria production, and also from environmental factors as mentioned before. But this is not good, because our genetics are the vital blueprint to rebuilding our cells. So when they are damaged, they cause chaos and dysfunction in our bodies, resulting in cancer and many other diseases. To prevent this, our cells have a defense barrier at the end of each chromosome, known as telomeres. But as they shorten, they eventually reach a critical length, which then initiates cell program death, known as apoptosis, in order to avoid unwanted DNA damage. However, the key factor in all of this is something known as the hay flick limit, which is simply the max number of times a cell can divide before the telomeres become dangerously short and commit cell suicide. This creates a problem though. We have limited stem cells, which are the embryo to most other specialized cells, and as time goes on, we begin to run out of stem cells, which cannot replace the rapid dying off of cells and thus we have the beginning hallmark of tissue ageing. And so our organ and tissue begin to degrade and lose function as we run out of new parts. Another issue we face is senescent cells, 
which are cells which instead of dying stick around like zombies and cause problems such as inflammation and age-related diseases such as type 2 diabetes and Alzheimer's disease. So how then do we overcome this? Well in the last 20 years this field of longevity also known as rejuvenation biotechnology has been growing rapidly. Leaf Science, a group that researches on this topic, states that this type of technology tackles the root cause of aging, that it directly addresses any of the various aging processes in order to restore tissue and organ function to a more youthful state. One therapy is called senolytics, which aims to eliminate harmful senescent cells from the body through medication. Another is stem cell therapy, which aims to replenish the body with stem cells in order to restore the body to a youthful state. However, both therapies require a comprehensive and complex program for the vast types the body demands, a science we are just barely beginning. However, this idea is gaining attention around the world. One writer making it known is Yuval Noah Harari, in which in his book Homo Deus talks on the future prospect of attaining immortality in the 21st century. This is a natural conclusion as we have seen that the human life expectancy has doubled in the last two centuries. And while this change may be astounding and true, studies are finding that our lifespan, which is looking at the max years a full healthy human can live, hasn't changed much. For example, a sample study looking at the lifespan of 397 ancient men in Rome born prior to 100 BC 99 of them died violently, by murder, suicide, or in battle, while the others were able to live to a median age of 72, just six years below the US life expectancy today. Although this study is narrow as it records only men who were prominent enough to be remembered, excluding a large portion of society, it still shows that people aren't really living longer, but rather less people are dying early. In today's society, there is just less dangerous things that will kill us early on in life. There is also a number of historical sources that indicate that the human lifespan is actually declining compared to our ancient ancestors. This puts a reality check on our journey to immortality, as our modern medicine and technology hasn't increased our lifespan much, if at all, compared to those living 2000 plus years ago. Faced with this, it seems we are further from immortality than we want to believe. But that's not to undermine the amazing feats in medicine we have had. Many more people live a healthy, longer, happier life. And we have come a long way in extending the life expectancy. And as the field continues to grow and science continues to unravel the mystery of aging, the unthinkable might happen. In 1903, human flight was unthinkable but now it is a daily part of our lives. So too may the future generations become accustomed to longevity therapy that extends our lives well over 100. Although the complexity of what it takes for a human body to live in full health is immensely more complex and difficult than human flight. And so in my humble opinion, I can't see us extending life more efficiently than prevention and lifestyle has been shown to do so far. But then again, I'm happy to be wrong.